Okay, today's talk is about how to deal with the most difficult people you'll ever come across. Those are the ones who we have to have uh, good information on. Okay, so the most difficult people to help are the ones who are stuck. And a good example of these ones, um, it's very difficult to give you a good example because they're all on a scale. And you might find someone very difficult and then lo and behold, then you find a whole pile of easy people and then you find someone super difficult. What do I mean by super difficult? I mean people who can't wake up. People who can't wake up. They are... Mm, what do I mean by wake up? Wake up means realizing that they are. And the ones who can't realize that they are, are walking around in a slumber. They don't understand, and they are incredibly hard to awaken. What do they need? It's mostly what they don't need. The ones who won't awaken are ones who can't get their picture. And the picture they're trying to get into is their own instinct. Quite often I tell beings that the reason why they're so stuck in their negativity is their instinct, but it's not totally correct. Part of it is they can't get their instinct wrong. Now, I kind of stumbled over the words because I can't get it out in English. It's because... When you are running around and running around and running around like you're in a car and you're driving all over town and you're looking and wondering and you're just paying attention, are you getting the information you need? With some people that are highly awake, it all comes. They have tremendous journeys with just so rich in information. But the ones who are deeply asleep, they are clogged. It's like a clogged drain. And they, they're just blocked. They're just blocked. And they go for years, decades, without any progress whatsoever. And, you know, you can look at different healing modalities for these ones. And some of these things could work. But the point is, if they are going to work, you will be given the tool. And if it's a waste of time, um, you can really follow your intuition on the margin to see whether it's even worthwhile trying. Sometimes you'll just get it uh, so so much that it's just like, uh, that this isn't worth uh, investing time and it's better to keep going. And sometimes you end up going back to these ones that you kind of felt like it was never going to work. Try it anyways and just to see. Because you, it's like Thomas Edison when he was trying to find the perfect filament for an incandescent bulb. He tried so many things to before he stumbled across the right thing to do the job. And so this is what it's like when you're working with people who are, you know, we consider them what do we consider them? Mm, all the things that the psychiatrist would say uh, are um, diseased. And these things, and then there's way more things than psychiatry ever described. So, who has the ability to deal with these people? Today, I saw someone post um, 
an article or basically their opinion that some of the people who are the worst horrible horrible predators on the planet need to be locked up in jail and never let out and mm, when I'm under attack by predators like this uh, I feel the same way I actually feel like they need to be deleted from existence and sometimes when I'm not under demonic attack uh, I revisit the issue and I look to see where there's flaws in my thinking in that I think the only solution is to delete them the biggest problem with deleting beings is uh, their consciousness the beings so what you're looking at is deleting a conscience sentience and it is someone says fraught with problems it's not only fraught with pro problems it's wrong it's wrong the issues that these beings have are in their mental and emotional bodies and the issues are hard to determine in a, as a general sense because there um, there's so many possibilities that I've come across and to give you good information how do you deal with an entity who can merge with you and you then um, you can't get rid of it it's like when uh, Neo in the Matrix uh, merged with Agent Smith it's very I don't I can't remember what happened with Neo and Agent Smith but they basically came together and well the, where do, where are we going with it I guess what is the what is the place we want to get to what we want to get to is to have the beings free and when I say free I mean able to manifest what they want by themselves in our world we have to have so many people to get things done we have enormous communities and uh, uh, it just goes on and on the organized the organizations because we don't manifest anything we do everything using well it's physicality it's physicality we are not using any real skills to manifest things that we want um, like magic so that's the biggest issue is that we don't have magic and why is it it's mostly it doesn't really matter but it's mostly because we can't get into our magic box where all our magic tools are we're locked out why are we locked out can't really say it's another puzzle that we're working on how to get into your magic box so you can manifest things part of it I believe is attachment to our world this idea that we're living on planet earth and it's you know it's it's mother nature and it's like all the people in your world this is what the buddhist called uh, calls um, attachment and the biggest problem with it is the the ideas that we're attached to are incorrect we are constantly worried about the rainforest burning down or the pollution in the oceans it's one worry after another because we are convinced that this is a physical solid world some people say well you know most people say well we live on a globe some people on the fringe are going to tell you it's a flat earth 
And then some other people are going to say, well, it's a multidimensional earth and it's, uh, it's impossible to put into words with all the different dimensions. Somebody once tried to use a torus and then there was other kinds of shapes, bizarreties. The problem with all this is that it's just someone's description of something, I don't know where they get it from, what's true. It's leading you down the wrong road. At the heart of what you are, you are a speck of awareness. And, you know, usually that resides um, somewhere in your body. What people are convinced of is that they are the body, the whole kit and caboodle. So uh, then the body needs to have all of the accoutrements of a body. It needs to have water, food, um, shelter, etc., etc., all of the what we call the basic needs for the human body. The issue is, is that this is holding us back because we are so conditioned to believe that we are, while we're, you know, while we're alive for, you know, 60 or 80 or years on this planet, we are totally in reliant on this body. But we are a speck of awareness that seems to ride along with the body. And our awareness is also um, interlinked with the mental body and the emotional body, other bodies perhaps. But we really, really feel like, uh, you know, when I'm talking, it's part of me. My body is me, and everyone is, uh, you know, wants to protect their body from harm. But the body is a created thing. The mind, you know, the, the thinking and the thoughts are all created things. They are not what we are. They're things that we experience. We experience the body, and we experience the world through the body. And when we think about the when thoughts arise in the mind, we say, well, it's my mind, and that's where the thought came from. So I, I, it's my mind, it's mine, and that's part of me. So it's a lot of ownership. And it's incorrect because we are not creating these things. These things, when we come here, are already here. So what does it mean? It means that we are going up and down, uh, pacing, looking for some way out of this mess. Because we are doing it incorrectly because of our belief that we are the body, we are the mind, we are the thoughts, and we're reliant upon the planet to keep us going. To venture to give you an example of someone who is not like this, uh, very hard to find an example for you. It's mostly hard because they're not commonly found. This planet is a conglomeration of people who um, have forgotten everything about what they really are. And everything you learn here leads you down the wrong direction. So, um, people want to know, well, what really can I do? It's not so much a do, and it's even not so much a be. It's undoing so much. And what are we undoing it's uh, the magic that put us here in the first place. It's, it's basically magic. It's magic and it is hidden away in all of the humans on the planet. Uh, is it our own magic or did someone else do it for us? It's not necessary to figure that out. But it is... And then we have teachings that say to you, you should not go into magic. Why? Well, some teachers say it's going to be a um, hindrance to you because you're going to get lost because you're 
going to find the magic so um, self-absorbing that you're never going to be able to progress past the stage of having the magic. Is it true? Um, well, that's what some teachers say. They say avoid getting the supernatural spiritual powers. Just say no, I don't want them. Because they're hindering you from higher states of consciousness. The point is, if you forever refuse the spiritual powers, then how are you going to help when the world has got uh, negative beings who are using the spiritual powers? In other words, you're working on higher and higher states of consciousness, and you're running up against beings who are not, um, it's like an ethical question. They're not following the ethics. So you're, it's basically just like you um, in a, with a group of regular people. What you do, if you're wise among people, humans, is you set boundaries. Everyone knows that, you know, within a certain a foot and a half of a person is their very personal, intimate space. And if you're going into their personal space, um, it's going to, especially if they don't know you, it's going to trigger a lot of alarms. So no, what we normally say is we set boundaries. And because we're all physical humans, you know, we can push people away. If you're getting too close into my boundary, I, I can push you away. I can run away. Uh, I can call the police and they'll lock you up in a cell. But the kind of beings I'm talking about don't have the physicality. And they're the ones, like when I was saying, when Neo merged with Agent Smith. It's a merging of, maybe you might want to use the word, the spirits of the two people. And then what can you do? You can't push the other spirit away because you don't have the spiritual ability. And then... The question is, is it because you refused the uh, spiritual powers, the magics? In Hindu Sanskrit, it's called Siddhi. And teacher that I followed said, absolutely refuse the Siddhi. Refuse them. But if you do, then you have disarmed yourself. What have we learned from human history? Disarmament is a problem. It is a big problem. If you unilaterally disarm and you're up against a negative entity, um, they're not going to respect you from laying down your arms. The only thing they respect is someone who is strong. It's just a schoolyard bully. If you, I mean, this is the teaching of Jesus that is so stupid. It doesn't work on planet Earth. That is to, uh, well, when someone comes up to you on the playground when you're a kid and, um, you know, they give you a good shove and you, you fall down and you don't um, run at them and give them a, a punch in the nose because you're taught, well, Jesus was a pacifist. He wasn't a pacifist. But this teaching about, you know, someone asks you for, whatever, and you give them everything you've got, uh, it doesn't work at our levels of consciousness. Does it work where you're at Jesus' level of consciousness? On the scale of human consciousness, um, people on the planet don't calibrate anywhere near the uh, consciousness of Jesus. So uh, it's comparing apples and oranges. You just don't have the consciousness that that, that being had. And his teachings, um, are they wrong? They don't work on the human level. That doesn't work. The only thing that works when you're dealing with a bully is you have to be strong. And you have to have your boundary. They cross your boundary. You have to be willing to fight. <coughs> you have to be willing to fight them. Because it's the only thing a bully understands is a punch in the nose. Uh, some people might say, well, what if they're way bigger than you? <coughs> it doesn't matter. 
If you're not, if you are a pushover, so easy they're going to torment you forever. However, if you fight back, and even if you lose, uh, it's quite unlikely the bully is going to keep bullying you. Because why? Because they're scared of you. Maybe this time they beat you, but they're scared of you because they know that you're not going to back down. And that's what it is. It stops the bully the next time. It's basically they, they don't know what your capabilities are. They saw something in you. Basically, you refuse to be their slave. When you refuse to be someone's slave, um, the person who wants you to be a slave is going to go look for an easier target. So this is what we have to have when we're on planet Earth. We have to ignore the spiritual teacher that says to you, um, refuse the city. Why would that teacher say that? Um, perhaps they had an easy life. Perhaps they didn't get into um, a, a big problem with entities non-physical entities so if you you know and you you can try various things and waiting it out uh, but you're basically playing the pacifist because you have refused to pick up the armaments that the other one is using and so they're going to keep whapping you and they're going to keep bothering you and bothering you and bothering you so what do you have to do? You have to say, okay, well, I was following someone else's guidance. And they said, refuse the supernatural powers. Then you must figure out, well, how can I use the supernatural powers? You have to understand uh, the story is in Life and Teachings of Masters of the Far East. And do I have it here? Okay, here it is. Life and Teachings of Masters of the Far East by Baird T. Spaulding. So the teaching uh, in here was a case of um, bandits were coming to a village and uh, they were warned, don't come to raid this village. They came anyway. So the masters used spiritual powers, the cities, to knock the bandits off their horses and onto their asses. It's basically like using the stun function of a phaser in Star Trek. That's what they did. And then the masters went down and um, went to the bandits and um, helped them recover from um, the blast of spiritual energy which defeated the bandits. So from this book, it's clear that the masters are not afraid to use the city power. So, in the interest of understanding where have we um, forbidden ourselves to use spiritual powers, it could be um, human history. Because the fall of the great ancient civilizations, especially Atlantis, are due to what's known as abuse of power. The number one reason Atlantis fell was abuse of power. So how would abuse of power come about? It's using the spiritual powers for your personal gain. In other words, enslaving other beings. The other thing you must remember when you're using spiritual powers is that you are responsible for your creations. In other words, you don't create something and then um, walk away and leave it there. 
When you're done with your creation, you demanifest it. Is this an issue? Yes, it's an issue because we don't really know who created us, who created the system that we call uh, human biology. It's not good enough to say it arose in the Big Bang or it arose from God. No, it's not good enough. There's no one here who can say they're a sentient being who created the human uh, mind, emotional body, and the physical body. So the people who created humanity um, failed to stick around to teach us about these things. So we have to pull it out of it's a massive jigsaw puzzle, massive, massive jigsaw puzzle. And we have to go through the conflicting information where one teacher says, um, the masters use city powers, and another teacher says, always refuse the city powers. How are you going to figure it out? Um, it's basically the principle called the shaman looks. In other words, trial and error. You try one teacher's way and give it a go. And when you come to the conclusion that this teacher is uh, whatever they've taught and you've gone by that teaching, it doesn't work, then you drop it. Because the shaman looks and says, this doesn't work. And then you move on. You keep searching on a quest. You are questing for what you need. So it's not a failure, it's basically a trial. You're, you, you, you use what, what you found and you see if it works for you. And then if it does work for you, you look to see where are the limits of where it works. Because maybe it'll work for something and maybe it won't work for another thing. So it's just, it, it comes from uh, experience. So getting back to our city powers, the problem on planet Earth is there is a great deal of black magicians. Black magic is enslaving other beings. And a lot of the black magic you don't think is magic because it's physicality based. But when I tell you money is black magic, especially the way money is used on this planet, you're going to go, there's no magic in money. You know, it gets printed at the mint, distributed by the banks, and then we use it. The black magic in money is that it has made all of us slaves to the banks. Banks can basically make money out of thin air. Um, we, we have very limited abilities to make money out of thin air. When you write a check to someone, so if I've got $100 in my bank account, and if I wrote a check to somebody for $50, I have created $50 out of thin air. Because there's $100 in my bank account and a $50 check in my hand. So I created $50 because there's $100 over there and this is good for $50. So the issue is, is that when this gets sent into the bank, the bank is going to go to my account and deduct $50. But for that period of time, when someone has got the physical check that I wrote for $50, plus I have $100 still in my bank because it hasn't gone through, for that period of time, I created $50 out of thin air. But I can't... I, 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 it's just a limited time thing for me as a person to do. A bank, on the other hand, uh, does this all the time, and they don't, um, well, what did they do? Uh, they don't have to have, uh, let's say they have a reserve requirement of less than 10% of the money. So this is a um, fractional reserve system. 
where they are loaning out scads and scads of loans to people and uh, they don't have the money in, in their own account to cover it. Fractional reserve system. So in essence, they are printing money or they're, they're, they're manifesting money uh, and they don't have it. It's just out of thin air. And it's a black magic. It's black magic. Because if they can do it, they've got a license to do it by the bank regulations of the country they're in, they're allowed to do things that you're not allowed to do. Why is it black magic? Because it's, it's, um, it's an unbalance of power. Anyway, the whole point is that this planet, uh, and there's so many other ways that people black magic you, uh, and it's all due to our um, these other bodies that we have, the mental body uh, and the emotional body. The emotional body um, quite often is used by the black magicians to get you to do things. Um, you know, they use advertising to create a market for their product. You see a beautiful car, um, when you're looking at the internet or you're on television or you drive by the car lot and your emotions, um, especially if you've been just, something has happened to upset you and you're looking for something to fill the void. I mean, in other words, you're, you're feeling like you're missing out. And that's what advertising is all about. It's basically presenting you with this phony baloney picture of what um, a consumer society should have. You should have a house, um, a summer cottage, you should have two cars, uh, a boat, a snow machine, and then you should have, um, I don't know, you should have like eight weeks of vacation and you should have unlimited money to go anywhere on a cruise ship or to any exotic place on the planet. That's what they put into your head. It's black magic because most people can't generate enough cash to do that. The ones that do are using all kinds of techniques to get you to be their slave so they get your money. And um, it's the pyramid. It's the Illuminati pyramid where the people at the top have got all the ownership all the money and it's gone over hundreds of years where they've concentrated the wealth into these families once in a while someone who's uh, it's so rare though i mean it's unbelievably rare where you get someone who's gone from being um, nothing to being a billionaire it happens uh, like bill gates or jeff bezos but it's so rare. If there's 8 billion people on the planet, that's 2 out of 8 billion. So the chances that you're going to follow in their footsteps are nil. <coughs> you're more likely to be hit by lightning than to become a billionaire that they, the way they did. So what's the takeaway? The takeaway is still not being a pacifist. Standing your ground, setting boundaries, and then enforcing your boundaries. How are you going to do it? You have to use, well, if you're in a physical body, you're going to either, uh, you know, put up your dukes and say, you know, you're in my space, get the hell out of here. Or you're going to run away, or you're going to call the cops, but you're going to deal with it. <coughs> with spiritual problems... Um, some people say, well, you just meditate. And I'm quite often, I say a lot of times that's all you need to do to deal with your spiritual problems is to go and go into inner silence and be quiet. And, uh, if there's somebody who's looking at their watch all the time, uh, you got to tell that person to buzz off because it's just a matter of you getting quiet and waiting for the universe to deal with your issue for you. This is a very good way to manifest your way out of a difficult situation. It's becoming quiet, meditating, 
and it, it, it's, it's pretty much guaranteed to work all the time. That if you just are quiet and wait, and if you're feeling anxiety, you have to deal with the anxiety by realizing that it's a, it, it, the energy that's coming to you is not your energy. That will help you out most of the time on the planet. When it won't help you out is when you are dealing with beings who are using the spiritual city powers against you. In this case, you have got to also have access to the cities in order to enforce your boundaries. How are you going to get the cities? You're going to have to emulate the masters that already have them. How are you going to figure out that? Well, I'll tell you. Reading this book gives you the examples of what the masters do. But by reading this book, do you get the spiritual superpowers? No. Where are the masters that are described in this book? I can't find them. Is it a problem? No, it is not a problem. I'm sure that the masters know about what's going on on planet Earth. I am absolutely a thousand percent sure. I know you can only have a hundred percent, but a thousand percent sure. The masters know what's going on. And the reason that they're not making themselves available to us, for most people, <coughs> is because they want us to go and figure it out on our own. It is the true test of spiritual mastery in order to go down your path using trial and error and doing your research of books and various kinds of teachers and trying it all out and going through your life um, on your quest, your quest to become a master. So that's what you have to do. And if you are bothered by some um, being who's got spiritual powers, uh, well, part of it is learning. And in the, the Carlos Castaneda books, Carlos Castaneda talks about these kind of people uh, as being what he calls petty tyrants. And the masters of sorcery say, it's a great blessing to you to have petty tyrants in your life because they help you. Uh, but you know what a petty tyrant's like. It's like a micromanaging control freak boss. They're exceptionally difficult humans. What's good about having these people in your life? You learn to suppress your ego. In other words, you learn how to be a people pleaser to the tyrant. Now, this is another case where many teachings say to you, uh, don't be a people pleaser. So I'm telling you the opposite. I'm saying to you, as the teachers in these series of books on shamanism and sorcery teach you, you have got to get rid of your ego. And what is the ego? It's basically the one that wants to be doing lifestyles of the rich and famous. It wants sex, power, and money. So, And that's not mastery. That's not mastery. That is getting you stuck into the human scene where... Uh, Everyone knows it ends up just... I mean, do you really want to be one of those... Um, what do they call them? The housewives of... It's a housewives of the rich and famous, you know. That was the TV show. Where, you know, all they do is they go... The socialite. They just go from one party to another. They drink too much wine. They're drunk. They're, and, you know, they're wandering around high heels. And they're just ditzes. 
You know, they're the trophy bride, and I'm sorry they don't usually use an example of a male ditz, but everyone knows in the homosexual community there are plenty of these ditzy kind of homosexuals. I can say it because I've been in that scene. Now, where are you going to quest to find your city powers? S-I-D-D-H-I. I don't mean C-I-T-Y. Cities are the supernatural spiritual powers. Uh, you're going to have to do your research. You're going to have to do your research. And if you're a person that doesn't like to read, then maybe you're going to have to go and find someone who is known to do spiritual teaching and be aware of them. Be very wary of them when you take their course. Because I've taken courses from some of these people. And in the end, the final teaching they give you is how to become a black magic person. Seriously. Uh, not hidden. It's not me reading between the lines. It's me seeing on their Facebook post. Okay, now that you've learned everything else, now you've got to be a black magic person. You've got to have some dark in you so that you can go and hook other people which is slavery, enslaving other people, black magic, abuse of power. This planet is full of these kind of people. It's the kind of person who, um, it's like guru worship, cult of personality. It's like every time you have a problem, uh, you want to go back to this person. That is not a good kind of teacher. But sometimes you can really learn good stuff from these people. You just have to be able to set a boundary that says, uh, once I've got what I've got from you, um, thank you very much and see you later. In other words, cut ties and move on. Um, is there anybody here that can give you the whole course? You can go to one teacher and they're going to give it all to you. Um, there's probably eight sages on the planet right now. Eight out of eight million, eight billion people. That's the research of Dr. David R. Hawkins. He says at any one time, maybe six to eight real, authentic sages. So the chances of you finding one of these sages, you're not going to find them. You're not going to find them. Um, they're exceptionally rare and they don't advertise for students. The ones that do advertise for students, like, you know, Tony Robbins, for example, Deepak Chopra, um, there's a lot of minor ones as well, you know, that have got a small but loyal following. Uh, no, these, you can learn things from these ones. Yes, you can learn things from them, but don't set them up to, uh, you know, set, take course after co co course after course with these people and then go back 10 years later and take the courses again. I see people doing this. It's wrong. It's a mistake. You got what you got from them. Quite often you can get from their free materials, you can get everything that they're going to teach you. It's true. Um, or from the very inexpensive. In other words, if they've written a book, uh, quite often you can get everything you need from reading their book. Or a lot of times what I do is I go on Amazon and if you go to Kindle, the Kindle version of people's books, you get a free sample. And I go there all the time and I get the free sample. So I don't even, I, sometimes I buy the books. I still buy some of the books. But probably 70% of the time, it's more than 70% of the time. Now, it's, it's more, a lot of the time, it's, I get the sample. And if the book is really, really good and the sample doesn't include what I think is, it's going to follow, then I'll buy the book. It's very inexpensive when you do it that way. So if it's 70% of the stuff that I just get the sample from and then 30% that I buy, uh, I've saved myself 70% of the cost of my book buying. But I'm a reader. A lot of these kind of teachers have got free YouTube videos. And if it's not one of these major names, there's lots of upstart people who have got the very same information and they're presenting to you on YouTube for free. What else can you do to get good information? Um, well, I always say, 
go in a corner and sit and meditate and meditate every day. Or when you wake up in the morning, instead of getting out of bed and rushing to the shower to go about your busy day, lie there while you're, while you're just awoke. Lie there for a long time and meditate. If you're tired and you come home from work and you're, 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 you go lie down on the couch, put a light blanket on you. If you fall asleep, then it's a fall asleep. But sometimes all you need is a rest. And if you're just being quiet, that's a meditation, and that, that counts for meditation. What does that do? Um, quite often, you will get um, interesting information when you are in that quiet, restful, meditative state. Uh, how far will it take you? Uh, I can't say. I think the path for everyone is unique. So the last part is what to do if you're dealing with a person who is using the supernatural city powers against you. They are still a petty tyrant. So once again, look up Carlos Castaneda on the internet and type in petty tyrant and see, you don't even have to buy the book. And see what they say. There's lots of students of this. See what they say about how to deal with petty tyrants. And it's all about you getting rid of your ego. Once you've got rid of your ego, then if you're dealing with a petty tyrant, uh, the only thing that they can do that really is going to throw you off is um, they're going to interfere with your ability to rest. In other words, you're lying down and you're sleepy tired and uh, this psychic attack comes. And you have no spiritual supernatural power to block it. Some people say... They, you know, they call on archangels and ascended masters and things. Um, if it works for you, what have you done? Well, you've basically called on some other being to uh, be your police force. Is it mastery? No. That's the problem, is you're depending upon some other being. When I call on ascended masters and angels to protect me when I'm under psychic attack, what happens? Nothing. No one comes. So, um, what does it mean when I'm dealing with a petty tyrant who is using these spiritual powers against me? Well, there's also logic. Because the writings about spiritual powers are, is there's a seniority list of spiritual powers. And the more senior... Um, gifted masters um, have apparently the ability to take away these spiritual powers from people who are abusing them. But I think what's going on in planet Earth is um, it's a massive school. And many people don't have a clue that it's about the spiritual journey, spiritual things. And because they're all caught up in the physicality of it. So it's a very small uh, minority of people who are really interested in these kind of things. Uh, the minds of other people are interested. I mean, they'll go and see a horror movie, you know. Um, you know, read a Stephen King book or something about supernatural power. Because, but, but they never think that they're going to develop that themselves. And they never think it's real. It's just fiction. But it is real. It is real. Uh, so anyway, when you get rid of your ego and you try dealing with these petty tyrants uh, by using your logic and telling them things that might happen to them from their abuse of power, and um, it goes on and on and on and on and on, you know, for years, uh, then you might come to the conclusion, well, I am going to have to get something to enforce my boundaries with these beings. And so, um, even though I was told not to go for the uh, spiritual city powers, and the person who said that was the Enlightenment teacher, Dr. David R. Hawkins, who I talked about earlier in this talk. Uh, so what do you do? Well, you have to be sure that if you're going for the spiritual powers, that it, maybe it's the, 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 um, it's the last resort. In other words, everything else has been tried and I've got to continue my quest and this thing is sitting here. And what do I really want it for is uh, so I can have some, some time alone. 
because after years of psychic attack, I have to have some, I, I can't go on like this. This is ridiculous. I am being someone else's slave. And that is what I come to. So what, um, what's my way of getting the spiritual powers? I am currently initiating a quest to get the spiritual powers to protect myself from these kind of petty tyrants. Does it mean I still have an ego? Uh, it means that I still have, uh, I'm still dragging around a physical form and the physical form needs to have rest. And I can't, uh, just by meditating, just by being love, just depending upon whatever, I, would, I used to say like divine mother or something, uh, to a certain extent, I do seem to have um, limited amounts of protection from Divine Mother. But I've come to the point where, uh, you know, it's, it's not enough. So I am going to have to quest to get the spiritual city powers so that I can deal with the petty tyrants who haven't lost their egos, by the way. There's plenty of these people who are highly egoic and they're using their spiritual powers um, for sex, money, and power. Some of the ways that people do get types of spiritual powers, like magnetic personalities, this is one that, um, you know, teenage men, uh, just if they hear about this, they're going to drop everything and go and want this. Uh, you know, the magnetic personality uh, where, you know, you, you can have anyone you want to be your sex partner. This one, get because the monkey mind of people goes, oh, you're kidding me. This is available? Well, it is. How do you want to develop this? Uh, well, I would say meditate or um, the psychedelic drugs. But I give you a warning. If you start using these psychedelic drugs, uh, it's quite likely you are going to run into the spiritual trap that Dave, Dr. David R. Hawkins talks about when he says refuse the cities. Because you are going to be so dependent upon your drugs, you are going to become a drug fiend, a drug addict. You are going to be, basically, you're going to lose everything. You are going to lose all your money, all your possessions, all your friends, all your family. You are going to hit rock bottom and you might die. Or worse. What's worse than dying? Um, becoming the slave of um, demonic entities. That is a face worse. That is a fate worse than death. So, highly caution you on these use of these psychedelic drugs. There are way too many people saying everyone needs to be doing all of these drugs, and it's going to heal your spirit. No, it's not. These people are doing a huge disservice. A huge disservice to try and make all these psychedelic drugs mainstream. There's all kinds of stories about people being hospitalized by, by using these kind of drugs. You don't know what the hell you're getting with them. If you're, you know, they say it's this thing and then it turns out to be something else. You don't know what the hell you're getting. You don't know what the dose is. You don't know what the proper dose is for you. And if you should even be using this. So the best thing to do is to avoid them completely. Avoid booze, avoid drugs. Meditate. Meditate, meditate, meditate. Meditate, meditate, meditate. And that's going to get you, it might get you all the way on your path. Dr. Hawkins didn't use psychedelic drugs, as far as I can tell, not in his writings. Did he use them in past lives? Uh, could be. He doesn't really, he's, he, he doesn't really, he does talk about um, spiritual experiences when he was just a boy. And the main teaching of many spiritual teachers is that whatever you acquire as far as your spiritual attainments in this life, 
uh, you keep into your future lives. You might not access them in future lives because in future lives, you just might be in a bit different scenario where you never go into a spiritual path. But if you do go into a spiritual path in a future life, uh, whatever you've attained in your past lives, you build on it. So the first and most important thing you need to do is not get a magnetic personality so you can uh, get laid every night. No, that is a mistake. It is a trap. And you know there are so many opioid addicted people, crack people, uh, booze alcoholics. It is, it is an enormous trap and you can see it. Just talk to people, drive around your town. Everyone knows that these are problem people. And it's because they started using these things and they're highly addictive. And if you're using it because you want to develop spiritual powers, you're going to end up like Aleister Crowley. Uh, he went he went insane. He went broke. And did he end up doing mad? Oh, he wrote a lot of books, but he was cuckoo. And he was nuts. They called him the great beast. You don't want to go that path to get these powers. But many people will. I'm just warning you. Don't do it. Get rid of your ego. I mean, you'll still have a personality, but it's um, one of the spiritual teachers called it upgrading your uh, ego demands to ego preferences. So uh, my ego demands that I have a Lamborghini to take me to work. I got to have, I got to have it. I got to have it. I got to do every get, get rich quick scheme there is. Um, I've got to do investments. Um, I've got to um, make all kinds of shady deals because I got to have so much money to buy this Lamborghini. That's your ego demand. If you change it into a preference, it's, uh, well, maybe I can buy a used car to get me to work or maybe I can take the bus or I, maybe I can carpool. So you've changed the demand into a preference. Sure, I'd prefer to go in a Lamborghini in style, if you're very egoic. But, you know, later after you've examined this later and you've had many years on the planet, you kind of go, um, I don't want a Lamborghini. If I could rent one for a weekend, that might be fun. But what's the worry about it? It's every kind of worry imaginable. You've got this super expensive car. You're afraid that you're going to scratch the paint. Or if the engine breaks down, uh, you're never going to find a mechanic who can fix it. And it's going to cost you a fortune. Uh, or someone's going to steal it. Or they're not going to like you having it because they don't have it. And they're going to get black spray paint and spray paint uh, your, your Lamborghini with all kinds of graffiti. That's the problem with having very ostentatious jewels. You look rich and other people feel poor, so they're going to look to steal your stuff, break your stuff, um, get into your face because they won't want to want your money. So getting rid of your ego um, demands for being rich, rich and famous is the first thing that you have to do. And the best way to do that uh, is to remember to uh, be humble. And no one wants to be humble because our media is constantly bombarding us with all these ideas and culture is like, you know, you, know, you need to be, get into a career where you're going to make so much money so you can afford to live. But that's not a spiritual path. And a lot of spiritual teachers will try and get you like, you know, the Tony Robbins kind of person is, you can have it all. You can be a spiritual person. Uh, the millionaire mind person, T. Harv Eker, was also this way. You can have it all. You can have money, 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 and you can be a spiritual person because you're going to use spiritual tools to get the money. It's a, what is it? It's a money-making venture for Tony Robbins and T. Harv Eker and plenty of other people. Your best bet is to um, be humble and be kind. So the things that you learn, you're going to um, 
If someone comes up to you, if it's just some jackass, you're you're not gonna you're not gonna cast your pearls before a swine. That's an old Jesus teaching. In other words, don't give away all kinds of um, this kind of information to people who are just assholes, because they're not gonna they're not gonna use it. They're just gonna uh, don't bother. Don't waste your time. Your job is not to become. Tony Robbins on with advertisements. He used to have advertisements on television all the time. Uh, no, that's not your point. And when I said the, there's like six or eight um, sages on the planet, they're not advertising. That's not what they're all about. The, uh, the hook of it is, is it might get you looking into metaphysical spiritual information because you're trying to win the lottery or something. And then the hope is, once you get into it, that you're going to let go of these egoic desires and uh, you're going to progress. So, uh, to close it up, um, don't go doing psychedelic drugs to develop magnetic personalities. And if you're 17 years old and you're watching this video, uh, your hormones are raging and you're going, ah. Oh, So you, then you're going to go down the path of um, the drug addicts, the boozers, and uh, you're going to hit rock bottom and um, maybe you're going to die or become demonically possessed. If that doesn't scare you, uh, just wait till you run into one of these demonics. You really have no idea, even from the movies, you really have no idea what it's like to deal with demonic. You have no idea. You're so out of your, you're so out of the league that they're in. So, you're so unprotected, you have no idea what you're getting into. <sighs> Anyways, if you get into it, Who's going to rescue you? Mom and dad? Mm, Mom and dad can't cure you of addiction to um, these addictive drugs. They can't. Uh, I mean, there's, there's a lot of people who offer very expensive treatment programs to treat you for alcoholism or drug addiction. So you want to bankrupt your parents if you're so lucky to have someone who's going to volunteer to cough up 10 or 20 grand or more. That's all I got for you. I'm Harry Weaver.